The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. St. Mark writes, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. Holy and gracious God, on this second Sunday in Advent, we wait. We wait as your people for what you will yet do. Open our hearts to what you've already done and guide us as we wait. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have your Christmas decorations up? Nice. How many of you have your tree all trimmed? Everything's done? I have heard lots of chatter this year that people have been putting their decorations up earlier than normal. Now, I know we talk about it every year about how it seems in August that you've got your Halloween display right next to your Christmas display, and the two can get confused at times. But this year it's a little bit different. People have been lighting up their Christmas trees and playing Christmas music a little bit earlier than normal because it's one of those years. I have a pastor friend in another part of our synod, and uh, he unabashedly put out on Facebook on Halloween, yes, yes, we did this, and we're not ashamed. They put His family put their Christmas tree up on Halloween. Corinna... Ah, they put it up before Mary told Joseph that he was going to be a dad. It could be. We're certainly waiting for something and wanting something, aren't we? And I think that's the reality of 2020. It's a tough year. Just look at all that we've gone through as a society, as as a community, and how our lives have been turned upside down. My gosh, a year ago, I would never guess I would look out and see people with masks on their faces all over the place. It just is. And now it's not just a mask. Now they're actually accoutrement. If you look around, you'll see some that are quite nicely decorated. Some, I I see a bunch that have this Texas A&M thing going on. (laughs) Who would have thought that we would be at this place as a society, the level of anxiety is up, the level of depression is up, the amount of unrest is up, the amount of, of abuse taking place in, place in homes is up, the number of people who are struggling to survive from paycheck to paycheck if they're getting a paycheck is up, the number of people in our neighborhoods who are hungry is going up. It's a tough year. and. As uh, Corinne and I saw the, um, 
part of the movie Mame recently. We need a little Christmas right this very minute. It sure feels like that. But what do we really need? I invite us to go deeper. I invite us to go deeper theologically. I invite us to go deeper spiritually, emotionally. What is it that we really need? I believe that the Gospel of Mark is very helpful in this for us. Advent is that four-week season leading us to Christmas, and we all want to jump to Christmas, but in the church, that Advent thing is stuck right in there, and we wait. It's intentional. This year we're in Mark, and Mark has no Christmas story. Mark is the earliest of the Gospels that was written. That's what we can tell historically. And there is, there are no angels showing up in Bethlehem. Bethlehem's not mentioned at at the beginning of Mark. There's nothing. But what Mark does offer us points us to what we need most, to what truly transforms our lives. the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the beginning, the start. And I want you to take note that as he goes through this, he first starts out, gives a title line, and then he quotes the prophet Isaiah. And I want you to look at it. Prepare the way of the Lord. Who's speaking? And guess what? Mark lets us know straight up, it's God. God is the first one to speak in the Gospel of Mark, and God's voice is the voice of the initiator, the one who's starting things out, the one who is putting things in motion. And what he's putting in motion is prepare the way of the Lord because God's up to something big. Prepare the way for the one who's coming into the world Remember, this is the God who speaks into the chaos and brings all all things into being. This is the one who speaks throughout the eons, through the chaos, to speak words of life and hope and love. And this is the God who cries that out for us now. Prepare the way of the Lord. And then Mark tells us that there John is, is in the wilderness. And John's out there. He looks a little rough. He he looks a little wild. But he starts talking about a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He starts talking and inviting people to have a change of heart and head and mind and being. I'm going to focus in on that repentance a little bit because we always seem to get stuck there. In my mind, when I think of the word repentance, unfortunately, I always go to the image of Jimmy Swaggart, who, who was on TV just crying and crying before his television congregation about what he had done wrong. And we somehow think that that's what repentance looks like, that it's this, this, this somehow doing some big public display and being really sorry and having this, this attitude But I believe God invites us to repentance in a different way. Yes, that's a part of it, confessing their sins. That's what we heard in the gospel a moment ago, that the people were confessing their sins. But the repentance is, it's not that moment of sorrow. It's that change of mind and heart and being. It's that change that opens us up to something more, something better. That's the repentance, and that's the preparation of the way of the Lord, is opening ourselves up to what is God really all about for us. Not about just what I've done and focus there in the back, but looking at where God is leading. This past week, a pastor friend shared on Facebook, and some of you probably saw this. It was a quote from St. John Climacus. I didn't know who this guy was, quite honestly. I had to go look him up. He was a 7th century 
scholar and a monastic. He actually kind of went off and lived by himself for a long time before he ended up serving in, an, in a monastery. He's one of the later church fathers. This is the group of people that their, their scholarship and their writings are cherished by the church. And he writes this, and I think there's something in here for us. He says, to repent is not to look downwards at my own shortcomings, but upwards at God's love. It is not to look backwards with self-reproach, but forward with trustfulness. It is to see not what I have failed to be, but what by the grace of Christ I might yet be. See, I believe that's preparing the way of the Lord in our lives not to be bound by what has been, but opened up to what can be. I've shared the story before, um, a story told by a missionary that he was traveling from one city to another city, and this gentleman that had been assisting him um, in his mission work in this one location in some place in Southeast Asia that he, he gave him this letter. He says, I need an answer. When you land, I need to know what to do. So he opens the letter on the plane, and as he's up in the air and flying, he's reading this letter, and the guy says, I, I have prayed to God for a good woman in my life. I've prayed to God for a virtuous virgin woman. And then the guy writes, but I've fallen in love with this woman at the ministry who's a prostitute, well, was a prostitute, and I don't know what I should do. Am I to love her, or should I turn away from her? As soon as he landed, the missionary sent word back, marry her. In Christ, she is a new creation. In Christ, there is a new beginning. You see, repentance is not drawing us back and binding us to what has been, but opening us to what can be. It is forgiveness that sets us free so we can be who God formed us to be. What you did yesterday does not have to define who you are the rest of your life. Preparing the way of the Lord is opening us up so we can take and receive and live in the fullness of God's love and grace and mercy in this world, knowing that it's only a foretaste of what is to come. I invite us in these days as we wait, as we suffer through anxiety, as we go through this time of uncertainty, to be repentant in the midst of it turning back to God. Trusting God to look forward, to look up, to look for what can yet be. God's not done. And what we see in this world is not the final answer. I invite us as we wait, repent. Repent as we hear the good news. Have that change of mind and heart and being and look for what can yet be. Amen.